helmets on and sit back and relax because it's going to be one dynamite main event. <laughs> I think every single one of them, their dream is to go to NASCAR. Every single one. I mean, they think they're gonna be the next Dell Jr. or Jeff Gordon. As they get older, I think they start to realize that it's not so easy, but that's their goal. And that definitely was Joshua's goal. Joshua's five years old, and my dad called me and said, I got your son a race car. And my first thought was, there is no way my five-year-old is racing a car. But we went out to the track, and I mean, he loved it from the very beginning. My dad has been in his life from day one, and he took the place of his real father in a lot of sense. My dad used to be a race car driver, so I think in a lot of ways, Josh was living out his dream. <laughs> Joshua Jackson gets to work early. Jackson will pull away down the back straightaway. Tell me about the race. It was pretty good. The car was a little loose. Joshua Jackson to the lead! He was an extremely talented driver. He could avoid things that other drivers just couldn't at a very young age. Well, Josh, now. We traveled all over the country, pretty much in every state except Alaska and Hawaii. I know a lot of racers. I grew up with a lot of racers. And if there was one person that I could tell you who was gonna make it, I'm not being biased because he's my best friend. Joshua Jackson had the talent to make it all the way. He was a five-time national champion. Josh has always been treated differently on the track. When you have a black kid in a very white sport, a lot of hurtful things have happened to him because of it. Any one little thing was off with this car, they'd disqualify him. If he hit somebody else, he'd get black flagged. When he was younger, I would say, you know, they're just making you a better driver. Josh was very much on his way to NASCAR. He had tried out and he got to meet a lot of the NASCAR officials and everybody was very impressed with how he drove the car. All they asked of him was, please go out and get in a faster car and then come back. So the decision was made to go sprint car, which is a 360 open wheel car. It's a really fast, dangerous car. It's easy if you make contact, somebody is gonna go flying. He went out in the main event and I went to the tower to videotape. A couple yellows had come out. He was working his way. He was probably about mid-pack. There's Joshua Jackson in the 37. Flames erupted out of the hitters. It was burned. Fires out. Joshua Jackson will try to get over to him. He's okay. 
I'm like, okay. He's just got the wind knocked out of him, is really what I thought. His friend started to spin in front of him, and Josh corrected because it's open wheel. They touched wheels. And then a third car. When Josh was in the wheelie, the front nose of the car went into the opening of Josh's sprint car. Is he conscious yet? It broke the roll cage and struck Josh in the head. It was a shock tower. So it was basically like a missile to the side of the face. Is he okay? have any kind of status on, on the uh, driver. I've got his mother here and she's completely hysterical. They're airlifting him to uh, El Paso. At this time, race fans, if you could please rise on your feet and bow your heads. Father, we ask that you please watch over Joshua Jackson and his family. We ask that you please get him back conscious and back healthy. Get him back home safely. Amen. Then we got a call. Brooklyn's mom called and said, did Josh die at the track? What's going on? And she was crying. And I remember saying, I, I think he's fine. And she said that it was posted on Facebook that he died. He had died in the helicopter from what I was told. And then they were able to bring him back. Everything was just kind of very quick. I think we drove, you know, 90, 100 all the way to El Paso and we got there. And his neurosurgeon was very blunt. And he was like, I'll do everything I can, but there's really no hope. So you need to make arrangements in the morning. I actually don't remember anything. When the shock tire went through my helmet, it crushed my soul. Skull. Skull. Okay. Crushed my skull. The surgeon removed part of my brain. Or my eye. My eye. And I suffered a stroke. The right side of my body was paralyzed. When I woke up, my mom was there. And Brooklyn was there. That's all I remember when I woke up. I was in the hospital for four months. Five months. Six months. Can you open your fingers? I guess it was almost like watching a baby and getting excited, you know, oh look he did this, you know, because we didn't know what to expect after everything. We didn't know if he was ever going to walk again. He was in rehab for nine months. Look straight ahead, look at the camera. There you go. No, move your eyes. He lost his left eye. So he can't see anybody that's on the left side of him. So stay low, make sure that knee's bent. There we go. Nine, ten. Okay, both. On both hands? You can do it. One. You gotta remember, you gotta, you just gotta get it going. You gotta think of your goals. Where do you wanna be, Josh? Where do you wanna be? All you've been through. All you've been through, Josh, you're almost there. Keep pulling. Don't pass out because you're breathing. I have a limited, I have a limited range of motion in my right arm. Um, I can't move my ankle. My ankle is fused. I don't have peripheral vision. I have speech aphasia, so I can like like think of something, 
And then when I go to say it, it comes out completely different than what I'm thinking. My doctors told me that racing be out of, be out of the question. If I got another accident, it would probably kill me. At this point, he had gotten so kind of complacent with his recovery, the sadness was starting to kick in. And I felt like I had to do something. We were going to a movie theater, and right next to the movie theater was carting. And Josh was like, now, Mom, we're going now. So I agreed. We went in. He broke the track record like the third lap out. Welcome back to the New Mexico Motorsports Report here on ESPN Radio 101.7 The Team. We'll have Brooklyn Green back. It's finally good to have you back in the seat. How are you doing? Thanks, David. Yeah, I'm doing good. How are you? Good. And so you, you brought a special guest in this morning. Uh, uh, introduce who you got with us today. Yeah, so we've got Joshua Jackson in the studio. How are you doing, Josh? Pretty good. When you think Joshua Jackson, you think racing. And after you do something for so many years since you're... How old? Four? You started when you were four, three? Yeah. Yeah. So tell me, what is it like to race back at Las Cruces with all of your history at that track? You know, it's in the past now. I just, one of those people that can't give up on racing no longer. Cause, uh, <laughs> right. I don't know what to do if I don't race and there's really nothing I can do. So you gotta focus your mind into like, um, where you're at now and finding a way to make yourself go out and win, win and at least try to win. Fall Nationals is usually the end of the race season. It's kind of where everybody kind of gets together. Usually it's big money. How you do at the Fall Nationals can typically give you a standing before going into another national race. He's like every other driver. He's out there to win. He's not out there to, to come in second. So he'll do what he has to. I don't have any ill will where the track is concerned. It is a track that's hard for me to watch Josh race on. For me, it's reliving it all over again. Up next, he raced one of two for the Cassinis on Legends of the Southwest. As they roll over the racetrack, he raced number one. Go to the inside, up on the 37 of Joshua Jackson. Jackson at Albuquerque in the mile two wild boat machine chain. Our retro equipment number 37. Getting set to storm off of turn number four. Number 
77 of Eric LaCroix with Joshua Jackson. He's going to go three wide down the back straight away. Joshua Jackson, three wide, looking for six. And Saunders has muscled his way to second after starting fourth. And trouble breaking forth from Ralph Jackson. Caution is out around the racetrack. First caution of tonight's racing program. Easy, 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 easy. So we'll get Chelsea, Josh Jackson, and Greg McCoy cleared from turn number three. Modified action, and there you see Jackson trouble in the right front. So that right front is bent, and it looks like he will take it to the pit area. Remember last time. Like I said before, he goes out to win. And I know that if he's in another serious accident, he's not going to walk away from it. When somebody tells you that your dream is gone, you're not going to live your life. This is what makes him happy, and I didn't give birth to him for him to live the life I wanted to live. On 18 cars ready to come to green, this time by 20 trips around for tonight's Legend A Main. All 18 starters present and accounted for. Here we go, Greg McCoy and the Las Cruces turning them loose, and away we go. Greg McCoy to the inside, Zach Rodriguez to the outside, Zach will jump to the race lead. Trouble one car spinning, Eli Woody's around. Dylan Harris will drive away quickly, Josh Jackson gonna move bottom to second spot, now he's off the racetrack, they're three wide. Jackson has slipped the right rear off the bank, he can go from second back to fourth. Jackson hanging on to the runner-up spot now. Keep... Oh, there goes Jackson. Josh Jackson may challenge for the lead here. Dylan Harris with a couple car length advantage. Josh Jackson down to the bottom. Harris up top, Jackson down to the bottom. They're almost side by side. Harris with a three car length advantage. Negotiating turn three that time. He allows Josh Jackson to close in a little bit closer in 37. It'll come on second. Where most kids had different dreams, you know, to be a firefighter, be a lawyer, whatever it is, whatever they wanted to do, it, and it changed daily. Josh has never changed. He's had this one dream and he was so close to making it happen. 
I was so close to making it an NASCAR. I was so close, so close. Before the accident, he was so focused on where he wanted to go. Sometimes it wasn't even that fun. Before the accident, I was really successful, but I was angry all the time. He would still love to make it, but he's happy. And it's, it's a happiness that I haven't seen from him in a long time. The people that are close to him know why he still does what he does. We also know that it gives him the power back and it gives him the right to make the decisions himself. He knows the risks and he, he accepts those risks and, and I accept them with him. I know I never raced in NASCAR. Maybe. This maybe. <laughs>